Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne, First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. Looking in the book of Esther this morning, and we're looking in Esther chapter 4, and you remember that uh, Esther has risen to the role of, of, of being queen, and um, we know that there's a antagonist there, there's Haman who wants to uh, destroy all the Jews, specifically Mordecai, Esther's cousin, or nephew, uh, uncle, and uh, because he, Mordecai refuses to honor Haman uh, the way that Haman uh, desires to be honored. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a law that, that, that's given out and that uh, the Jews are going to die. And Mordecai goes to his niece, who is now, um, you know, in a place of prominence. She's the queen. And, uh, and Esther is vacillating on this. You know, what, what is she going to do? Because in order to go before her husband, the king, uh, without being called, she could die. And certainly, as a Jew, she could have died in the, uh, in the insurrection as well. And so here is Mordecai, uh, Mordecai, he says in Esther chapter 4, verse 13, it says, in Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now, looking back uh, from this point of view, uh, thousands of years after this incident, we look back and say, yes, God did put her in the palace for such a time as this. Esther had to come to a point in her life where she realized that her life was worthless unless she fulfilled God's will for her life as she's been placed in that position. Mordecai prompted her to do so and to think about things outside of just her. Esther probably could have been saved, uh, but what kind of life would she have had if she had kept her mouth shut while everyone else that she knew, her fellow Jews in that kingdom, were killed? You know what? We live in a world where uh, it's easier for us to just keep our mouth shut to stay inside her house, to not take a stand. And I believe, like Mordecai said to Esther, who knows whether you were put to live at this time in this place of history of all that's going on in the White House, all that's going on in our culture, all that's going on in, in wayward churches out there. Who knows whether we were put here for such a time as this? And I believe you were. I believe this is our appointed time. I think that Peter had his appointed time. I think that uh, Spurgeon had his appointed time. And I think that you have an appointed time and I have an appointed time. And if we die, we die. But at least we know we've done what we're supposed to do. This is not the time for believers to cower. This is not the time for believers to keep our mouths shut. This is a time for you and I to stand up and to speak up about what's happening in this world, that it is counter to what the Word of God says. We need to confront the false teachers. We need to uh, encourage believers to take their stand, to get into church, to get in the Word of God, to repent of their sins and turn back to Christ because the rapture of the church is here. It's coming. It's coming in our lifetime, I believe. And you and I must be about our Father's business because whether we do it or, or, or not, God will raise up, as Mordecai said, uh, as someone else, and deliverance will come a different way. You and I are the Esthers in this world today. We have a job to do. God appointed us for this time. We must resolve within our heart that the best they can do is kill us. And I say the best because uh, for me to live as Christ, 
but to die is gain. Let's speak up. Let's stand up. Let's do what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen.